Okay. Hey, Marvin, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, man. How you doing? Uh, doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, author, NBA basketball coach, you've got a new book out. How long has the book been out? Uh, the book uh, called Secondary Break, an NBA Dad Story. It's been out since um, July this year. All right. So, your son played for the Atlanta Hawks. Is that correct? Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, he played, played there about six years. Okay, and he's retired now? Yep, he retired um, last September. Okay, what's he doing with his life now? Well, you know, one thing he's doing mostly is spending time with his, his two kids. He got a, a two-year-old daughter and a six-year-old daughter, so he's spending a lot of time with them. They've been traveling. He just recently got married probably about a month ago. Uh, we, we had a very nice wedding out in, uh, in California. Oh, that's great. He probably was smart to wait till he finished his basketball career before getting married, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think because, I mean, all that moving around takes its toll on him. And if you got a family, it's, it's a little tough on your family. Oh, yeah, because you're not going to be home very much if you're playing. Correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's true. All right. Well, before we talk about your book, Secondary Break, uh, why don't you give us a little bit of your backstory? I know the book kind of covers your life, right? Yeah, it covers my life. Um, I, I grew up in New York City in, uh, in the 60s, 1964 to be exact. I spent a lot of time, I, I lived there until I was about 13 years old. And uh, in my book, I talk about the things that I went through as a 13-year-old in New York and the things that I saw, um, good, bad, and ugly in New York. And then after I was 13, uh, my parents moved us to a town called Wallace, North Carolina, a little small country town. I ended up spending the rest of my high school career there. In, in, in crop and tobacco all, until I was like 17, 18 years old, working on the fields. And after that, I um, graduated from high school. I ended up joining the military because of basketball and spent four years serving the military in the United States. Actually, it was six years in the United States Navy. And after that, I got out, went to college. I had my son while I was in the military, had my son, went to college on a basketball scholarship. I ended up getting my um, four-year degree after um, attending a, a community college as well as a Division one school. And uh, other than that, after that, I've tried out for the league. I had Marvin. I've done a lot of individual training with him and got him into, to the level where he's at. He was at the NBA level. Uh, I did that. And then after he got in the league, I worked with him throughout his whole career. Then I also, once he was done, I started an AAU um, basketball program, which I ran for about five years. Uh, now, you never played professional ball, right? No, but I tried out with a lot of different teams. You tried out, but you didn't make the cut? Correct. Okay. Why do you think you didn't make the cut? How tall are you? <laughs> I'm six foot tall. Six foot even? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's not exactly the, the tallest person on basketball I've ever seen. Uh, not, not today's basketball. Back when I was playing, that was the norm. To be six one, six two, to be a point guard. Why has everybody gotten so much taller over the last 40 years? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's just genetics. You know, you have that generation. You always have that different generation come through. And I think this generation now is it. It's funny. I mean, you look at college basketball, everybody, they look for a point guard at 6'5", six, 6'8". Six, yeah. They used to be a forward position. It's funny that the players have gotten taller and the shorts have gotten longer. Yeah. I don't know. It's, just, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all different and, now. And, and the sneakers have gotten short. They got the ankle high. Ankles are low on the sneakers as well. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So before the interview, you told me that you're you're calling in from Dubai. What are you doing in Dubai? Yeah, I came over here because my um, girlfriend's birthday was uh, August 17th, and I wanted to do something nice for her. So Marvin had just recently came from over here, and uh, he was scheduled to do a basketball camp over here, but uh, I guess that got canceled. So I came over to, to take her for her birthday. Oh, just on a vacation over there, yeah? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. How's the COVID situation there? Not a problem? or? No, no, no. They got it under control. I mean, they have you test. You know, you do a couple of tests before you come in. And then when you get to the airport, they also test you before they let you in, which I really like that. I think that's a great idea. That is a good idea. Is is there any um, any mask mandates or anything there where you can kind of walk around as you like? Well, everybody I saw walk around outside with their mask on, so I'm assuming it's a mask mandate because I haven't seen anyone without their mask on walking outside. What do you do in Dubai? I've never been there. Well, I, 
um, we're gonna do a couple of tours. You know, uh, they got the tallest building in the world. I wanna, um, we're gonna look at. Um, they got this hotel that's really, really nice. They say it's made of gold, so I'm gonna go take a look at that. Probably visit the area where the prince and and, and the royal family lives. In a couple of, just taking some sights. All right. Well, that sounds like a good holiday. Yeah, yeah, it'll be entertaining. I noticed your son's name is Marvin Gay Williams. Did you name him after the singer? Yeah, I was actually named after the singer. My um, my mom uh, used to go to the Apollo Theater in New York. My um, dad's sister had, she's a ticket taker, so she used to let us in. For what I understand, my dad and my mom said they used to get it for free to see all the shows like Marvin Gaye, Temptations, and all those guys. So I guess my mama went into labor while she was watching Marvin Gaye at the Apollo, and they had to rush her to the hospital, so she named me that. <laughs> and so I just passed the name down to Marvin. Oh, that's a nice story. That's yeah. great. Yeah, I'm a big Marvin Gaye fan. I love his singing. Uh, oh, yeah, me too. His music is just awesome. So let's talk a little bit about Reach. It's a role model, endure, accomplish, character, hard work. How did you come up with that? Well, those are the things that I, I thought with Marvin, those are the things that I used to drill into him that you have to have, to, in my opinion, to be successful. Because if you can cover those things, you know, be able to endure, be responsible, uh, have great character and, and work hard. I mean, he's a walking example of that as far as I'm concerned. I used those same philosophies with him his whole life. Who was your role model when you were growing up? Well, I had a couple of them. I had my uh, high school coach and I also had a guy named Tommy Van Johnson, uh, who's, who's since passed, but he was like my major role model. He spent a lot of time me teaching me basketball growing up. And uh, I had to really, I, I got lucky to be the right place at the right time. I had some, met some great friends, Michael Jordan, played against Michael Jordan a lot on the weekends and Kenny Gattis on the weekends and uh, Larry Jordan's brother. So I had a lot of good guys around me to, 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 um, who played basketball well and, and uh, taught me how to work at it. All right, that's great. So your book, how long has your book been out? It's been out since July of this year. Okay, how's it doing? I think it's doing pretty well. Uh, my publisher said I'm, I'm doing better than most who first time writers would have. So I'm thankful for that. And I think a lot of it has to do with being on your guys' shows. That, that helps get the word out. COVID sort of uh, shut down book tours. Were you planning on doing any book tours at that point? Yes, sir, that's a good point. I actually were. That was part of the uh, process of signing up with the publishing company that I had, that I had, excuse me. So I would go, was to go and do some publishing tours, book tours and book signings. And you're right, COVID shit all that down. So now I just have to do maneuver around it. Well, you have to do all this sort of remote stuff like we're doing now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you have any plans to uh, write another book or are you going to see how this one does first? Well, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing this book and uh, I'm hoping this book will help some people. The goal is this book to write is to share with people my life and uh, also to help them, somebody to see, okay, I mean, this guy went through a lot of stuff in his life as a young man and look what he turned out to be. Maybe I can do the same thing too. So I'm hoping that book will do that. And then my goal long term is to come out with another motivational type book for people, young people as well, and then maybe do some speaking engagements. That's my goal. All right, great. I want to hit on one of these uh, from the reach and just give me your definition. Uh, character. What is your definition of good character? Doing what you say you're going to do, uh, respecting, respecting other people's views and values. And, 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 and thinking before you do something, I always the most important thing is think before you do something and always do the right thing and be around the right kind of people. You think we're too greedy as Americans? You, think you say too greedy? Yeah, you think we're just thinking about ourselves too much and not thinking uh, about other what? people? I, I love that question. And the answer to that question is absolutely right. It drives me insane when I deal with people who all they think about is they sell first. I don't in my mind, I just can't comprehend being that kind of, being that way. I always think I want to think of others first because I think if you do for others, God will bless you in his own way. I, I think I've traveled around a lot and you're in Dubai, so you've seen other cultures and other other ways that people live. And uh, Americans always seem to be I mean, I love my country and I love our American people, but we always seem to be so centered on us. And, and, you know, what can I get? What can I 
What can I take? What can I buy? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's just the culture of how we, as Americans, we were raised. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I talked in the cab one day to a gentleman when we was in San Francisco that they couldn't get the shots over in this country, in Korea, and some of the rich people over there were trying to fly over here so they can get the, pay to get the shots. So I think we've been blessed as people to grow up the way we have. And sometimes I think we take it for granted. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, you were mentioning the, the vaccine. I know they're having a lot of problems in Thailand where the wealthier Thais yes. are flying to the United States just to get the vaccine yeah. because they don't have the vaccine or enough of it in Thailand. And then you've got yes. the people in America that don't want to take it. So they want to take it and it's free. Right, and it's free. So we, yeah. we've got more vaccines than we know what to do with. And some yeah. parts of the world, they're begging for it and they don't have it. Yeah. And it's really bizarre. We built our country on, on um, personal freedom. So when I think people in these situations are just taking advantage of the option that they have personal choices. So, which is, I mean, I think it's great. Yeah, well, I think people have the right not to take it. Yeah. But it, it's yeah. just bizarre to me that, well, okay, if you don't want it, maybe we should ship it off to Thailand and let them, right. I agree with that. You know, I and let those that. people take it, right? Well, listen, uh, you got anything else you want to bring up or we wrap it up? You have a website that you want to give out? You can go to uh, secondarybreak.net. That's my website and order the book. You can also order it on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, iTunes, Apple Play. Once you, once you read the book, you'll understand the struggles that people go through. I think people have a misconception that NBA dads and moms had a great life because their son's in the NBA. But there was a struggle for the parents before your son or daughter got to, the, to that level. You know what I mean? And I think people need to understand that and read, read the book and need to tell them that. All right, Marvin. Well, it was nice talking to you. Nice meeting you. Have uh, Thank you have fun so in Dubai. Time.